to learn about my favorite artist, Keith Haring. And he's an artist that creates art by telling a story and using symbols and simplicity. Turn on your artist brain and look closely at Keith Haring's artwork. So, no comments, let's just look through. Now let's look at the artwork again. This time when you look, I want you to think about these two questions. What do you notice about Keith Haring's art? And what are some characteristics of his art? Meaning, what are some things that if you saw his artwork on the street, you'd be like, oh, I know that's Keith Haring because his style uses these things. So let's look ahead, and this time, let's, let's look closely. What is the pink figure, and what is the blue figure doing? Well, first, the pink figure is dancing, and the blue one is, like, jumping and dancing. Right, so you can tell what the figures do by the fact that the figures are in certain poses, right? Yeah. It looks like they're moving. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at this, this is kind of a, a neat picture, right? People running over top of someone. Yeah. But when I look at the head, so let's look at the head of Keith, Keith Haring's figures. I see what letter of the alphabet in the head? C, and Keith Haring doesn't make circles for his figures. Yeah, so they don't, C's. exactly. So they don't do a circle, they just do the letter C. So when you draw the head of Keith Haring figures, they have an opening where the neck would be. Yep. Now, this could be like a superhero, or it could be an angel, or, is, or it could be a demon. What do you think it is? It's a demon because it has an X, and it's red, and it has wings. Very good, that X in the center, right? And we're going to see an angel later. Yeah. Uh, these people are slapping five, but aside from the weirdness of the picture, yeah. do you notice these marks? Yes. What are those marks called? I forget. <laughs> okay, but what are they showing? What are they showing? They're showing lines and excitement. Yeah, so they're called motion lines, right? Yeah. And sometimes we see those lines in cartoons. Yeah. Now, when we look at Keith Haring's pictures and we just talk about color, mm -hmm. let's look closely at how many colors he uses in his picture. So one. that blue's one, right? Two. Three. Yeah, so he only uses three colors, and he uses bright, bold colors. So that's something you'll always see in Keith Haring's artwork. And I see it oh. in... I see in all the pictures all the same colors. Like right. A different background, like blue background, and another orange background, pink background. Excellent job. That's a really good noticing. All right, so sometimes, and we've talked about overlapping before, he overlaps his figures. And then at other times, he does not overlap he his figures. Let me see if I can move he doesn't this out of the way so you can see better. So he doesn't overlap. I guess yeah. it's going to stay there. Um, right. And then, so let's just review, all right? The characteristics of Keith Haring's artwork are stick-like figures, motion lines, C-shaped heads, bright, bold colors. He uses symbols to communicate a message. He uses overlapping at times. And usually, there's no faces on his figure, and you cannot tell what gender they are. How did Keith Haring become so famous? Let's take a look. Well, he was born on May 4th, 1958. These are pictures, of course, not of when he was born, but a little bit later, right? And he's just a normal kid. He's got those big, thick glasses. They were pretty popular at the time. He grew up in a town called Kutztown, Pennsylvania, right? And you can see that it's a small town, and surrounded, surrounding the town is a lot of farmland, and there's an old train station up there in the corner. This is Keith at his high school graduation. So even in high school, these are two pictures that he did during that time. You can see that he's very, very talented. And then all of a sudden, he decided when he went to college in New York City and he went down into the subway that he saw these blank spaces and he thought they shouldn't be blank. I could use my I could do my artwork there. So he grabbed a piece of chalk and he drew on these blank spaces. Now, 
Luella, can you tell me, is it legal to draw in the subway? Yes. Oh, you're allowed to draw wherever you I want? No. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's illegal. And he actually got arrested a bunch of times. So I'm going to click here and we're going to take a look at Keith Haring in action. So Keith Haring went from the subway to the art gallery, and once he became famous, there was no stopping him. He created a message of unity by joining red and black figures on the Berlin Wall. He even opened up a pop shop in New York City to sell his art in 1985. He was asked to do lots of different invitations and create invitations for parties. He created the famous Radiant Baby. Some more of his favorite images are shown here. Here we see that angel and the demon. We see a dog and a baby. We see a three-eyed smile, even though it's upside down. Here's some dogs barking. And this dog's doing what? DJing, right? Where are their hands? What are they covering? Their ears, their mouth, and their eyes. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. 
let's learn how to create a Keith Haring figure for ourselves. Alright, let's talk about how to draw your own Keith Haring. If I was going to draw a stick figure, I would probably draw a stick figure that sim similar to a way that everyone in this room would draw a stick figure. If I was going to make a guy stick figure, I'd probably make a circle head, stick body, two stick legs, and two stick arms. If I was going to do a female stick figure, I would probably do very similar things, except this time I might add hair, and I might give her a dress or a skirt. Now, if I'm going to make a Keith Haring stick figure, it's a little bit different. I start with a circle head, but I make a lollipop. Then I'm going to draw a rectangle around that lollipop stick. And from the corners of the rectangle, that's where the arms and legs are going to come from. Notice that the arm and legs have three parts. Two parts that are similar in size, and then a smaller part for the hand or the foot. You can pose the figure any way you want to, and this is how you achieve that look of motion. Now, Similar to how when you're a kid, you're only allowed to ride your bicycle or your scooter on the sidewalk. So I'm going to start with a C-shaped head, and if I pretend that the green line is the street, I'm going to ride my bike around the street, right, because the sidewalk goes alongside the street on both sides. So if you can imagine riding your bike on either side of that green line, when you trace the figure, you're going to end up with a thick stick figure the way Keith Haring draws his stick figures. And then you could just color this in. And then after you color, if we had a couple more things, like a background and some of those motion lines, we're going to really achieve the feel of a Keith Haring stick figure. Now once you get good at this, you do not have to draw that green line or that street. You can kind of do it on your own but this takes a lot of practice. Now let's break it down into steps. Step one, you're going to draw the lollipop stick. Step two, you're going to put that rectangle around the stick. Step three, you're going to draw the arms and legs from the corners of the rectangle, and you're going to do it in three parts. Step four, you're going to trace around that figure. So you'll do a C-shaped head. Don't close off that circle. Keep tracing around the street, right? Drive around the sidewalk. And then eventually, once you trace the whole thing, you'll have your Keith Haring. You could also retrace it like I did here by putting a piece of paper over top. Congratulations on your Keith Haring.